The Prophet Muhammad imparted a powerful message when he advised against envy, hatred, and slander among one another. He encouraged his followers to embrace the spirit of brotherhood, stating, Be servants of God, brethren altogether. Ibn Major and Musnad Ahmad, he further emphasized that it is impermissible for a Muslim to sever ties with a fellow believer for more than three days. Understanding the difference between envy and jealousy is crucial. Aspiring to possess the same goodness that someone else has is envy, while wishing to see that goodness stripped away from them is jealousy. Both emotions are destructive and jealousy, in particular, is like the trunk of a tree rooted in a host of negative characteristics. Thus, human beings require divine protection from it. In divine wisdom, God revealed Surah al falak a chapter that serves as a shield against jealousy and the dark arts of magic. The chapter begins with a heartfelt plea for refuge. I seek refuge in the Lord of the Dawn from the mischief of created things and from the mischief of darkness as it spreads and from the mischief of those who blow on knots and from the mischief of the envious one as he envies. Surah al falak 113 here, believers are taught to seek protection for every form of danger and evil. This appeal specifically addresses the need for defense against harmful practices, such as the actions of conjurers who recite incantations and blow on knots to cast spells. Such mischief often stems from jealousy, wherein individuals harbor ill will toward others who enjoy God's favors rather than wishing well for others. Those consumed by jealousy desire to hard blessings for themselves. Hatred, on the other hand, is a different beast. It drives a person to conspire against another, to seize what they possess or to deprive them of it entirely. Jealousy, however, manifests in a more insidious way. It creates a yearning for total possession, making it intolerable for the jealous individual to witness anyone else experience joy or goodness. A poignant example of this can be found in the tragic tale of Cain and Abel from the Quran. Both brothers presented sacrifices to God, but only Abel's was accepted. This rejection, coupled with Cain's jealousy over Abel's marriage to the more beautiful sister, ignited a fierce rivalry that culminated in tragedy. Cain's response was chilling be sure I will slay you. To which Abel, filled with righteousness, responded, if you stretch your hand against me, to slay me, I will not stretch my hand against you. For I fear God, the cherisher of the worlds. Sora Almeida 528. Beyond physical violence, one of the gravest threats to humanity is the practice of black magic. The Quran tells of two angels, Horat and Marut, who descended to earth and, captivated by its allure, fell into disobedience, bringing down God's curse up on themselves. From them emerged the dark arts of sorcery, which continue to thrive in regions such as the Caribbean, Africa, the Indian subcontinent, and the Far East. Some dismiss these practices, claiming they are harmless unless one believes in them. However, this denial does not shield anyone from their potential harm. Much like disregarding the danger of a tornado, the effects of black magic can be devastating, whether or not one acknowledges its existence. If there were no real danger, why would God provide us with verses for protection against such dark forces? Historical records show that practitioners even attempted to cast spells on the Prophet Muhammad this led to the revelation of Surah al falak not only to protect the Prophet, who was divinely shielded, but also to educate us about the malevolent practices that can affect humanity. The act of sorcery often involves intricate rituals, such as tying knots and reciting spells, which were commonly practiced by misguided individuals of that time. Such practices instill psychological fear with practitioners employing seductive charms and spreading falsehoods to slander the innocent. 
This is why God commanded the prophet to recite, and from the mischief of those who blow on knots, and to blow upon himself for protection. This act of recitation served to dispel the magic intended to harm him. Through this revelation, God highlights the reality that while the prophet was not susceptible to such malice, ordinary individuals might be. Historical research has documented the myriad ways in which black magic has been practiced across cultures throughout history, often invoking unseen entities like jinn and demons. Thus, believers are reminded to seek refuge in God. From these dangers, fostering a community grounded in goodwill and mutual support, free from the corrosive effects of envy and hatred,